The geotextile is rolled out at the base of the landfill lining system. It protects the geomembrane from being punctured from the rock below. Where the base soil has been compacted and leveled, a lower strength geotextile can be used. The geomembrane is then laid out on top of the geotextile. Finally, a second layer of geotextile is placed at the top of the lining system, in this case on top of the drainage aggregate. The geotextile acts as a filter. In coastal environments, engineers must contend with extremely strong forces from water moving in multiple directions. The challenge that coastal areas face from storm surges is quite different to that faced by road formations or landfills, dealing only with rainfall or water seepage. Traditionally, Rock structures have been used to resist coastal forces and protect land, beaches and infrastructure. Geotextiles offer a modern, cost-effective and more flexible option for coastal protection works. They are used as a filter layer under rock walls to replace the thick and expensive graded filter layer. They are also used as a building material in their own right when stitched into bags to contain sand. Geotextiles are used under traditional rock seawall structures. They separate the underlying sand from the wall and help prevent it from being washed away. Sand-filled containers are made from geotextiles. They offer engineers an alternative building material. They are also used beneath the sea in artificial reefs, which are designed to dissipate wave energy before it reaches the shore. Some geotextiles provide a host for marine growth. Manufacturing processes. Geotextiles are no different to other textiles. They are made from fibres or yarns. Yarns come in continuous long threads rolled onto spools. They can be made up of many individual fibres. Fibres are discrete pieces. They are often extruded from polymers and can come in bales. Yarns are woven or knitted together, and fibres are needled together. In both cases, a mat or blanket is created and is transported in rolls. Geotextiles can also be made from natural fibres such as jute or coconut, which are used in erosion applications. Here is a clump of fibre in the form used in manufacturing. Different fibre types are distinguished by their thickness, length and crimp, as well as strength, UV resistance and colour. Fibres are transported in bales. The bales are opened and spread to commence the manufacturing process. In the manufacture of geotextiles, engineers consider the function and performance requirements, the type of fibre used to make up the fabric, the polymer from which the fibre is derived. The required function and performance requirements usually determines the manufacturing method, woven, knitted or non-woven. Woven geotextiles are created using traditional textile weaving techniques. Many different weave variations are used. The different variations influence the physical, 
mechanical and hydraulic properties of the finished textile. When engineers are seeking the right product for practical problems, they often segment woven geotextiles into medium and high strength for reinforcement functions, high flow for filtration functions. Here is an example of a woven geotextile. You can see the individual yarns interweaving. This example has a tighter weave. It is a stronger product and has a lower flow rate. It is less porous. Knitted geotextiles have emerged in the last decade due to manufacturing innovations. Instead of yarns interlocking together in a weave, they are set down in two directions and knitted together with binding yarn. Knitted manufacture is used exclusively for reinforcement geotextiles. Polyester yarns with high strength at low stretch are used. Here is a geotextile knitting line. On the right side, you can see many spools of yarn that are being knitted together. A reinforcing yarn is knitted to a non-woven geotextile to provide greater strength. Non-woven geotextiles are made by laying down fibers in a random manner and needle punching them together to form a mat of fabric. Needle punching entangles the fibers to mechanically hold the mass together. Fibers may be created as a part of the manufacturing process or introduced. In spun bond manufacture, fibers are extruded directly from the polymer. In carding manufacture, the fibers are prefabricated. They are often supplied in bales. The two different non-woven processes determine the performance of the finished product. For example, a staple fiber geotextile can be made using various raw material inputs and combinations, that is, various fibers, whereas a spun bond process uses one raw material input only. Spun bond geotextiles are stronger per unit of mass than staple fiber products. A staple fiber geotextile may elongate more than a spun bond geotextile. 